this morning on CBS 2 News, inflation seeing a record increase. The plans to keep prices from going up any further. Plus, high heat impacting some of Idaho's most vulnerable. How one group is lending a hand to our homeless. And staying safe during tick season. Ooh, what to know if you or a furry friend encounters those pests. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise, a beautiful clear kickoff to the morning at 5 a.m. A beautiful day is expected, but we are going to heat up very quickly. Let's bring in Vasily Varlamos for a look at your forecast. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. And yeah, it's going to be a hot day today. Right now it is sitting at 67 degrees, which is the low today. And the lows across the board in the Treasure Valley are sticking at what we'd expect right now. It's the low 70s on the western side of the valley, low 70s in southern Idaho as well in Twin Falls. And up in the mountains, we're looking at the mid 50s to mid 40s as well. Future cast showing us what we can expect for the next few days. Not very much cloud cover. We may see some on Friday in the morning, but once the sun comes out, that cloud cover will start to dissipate and go away going into Saturday as well. On for the high temperatures today, we're looking at triple digit temperatures pretty much across the board in in the Treasure Valley, 103 in Mountain Home and 103 in Emmett as well. Nampa and Caldwell are looking at 102 with Boise looking at 102 as well. And over in the mountains, McCall is looking at 90 degrees and Stanley is going to be at 88 as well. Adventure cast for today, to, uh, this morning it'll be around 74 degrees and then going throughout the day leading up to 102 by 5 p.m. Ooh, another toasty day on tap. Yeah, that water looking nice behind you, Vasily. Thank you. It is 501 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there. A few headlights, but um, running smoothly on both our main roads and secondary roads for this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, inflation, it doesn't appear to be going anywhere just yet. Now, consumer prices, they surged more than 9% in the U.S. for the month of June. That's the largest year-to-year -year increase in over four decades. Now, higher rent and increased food costs did help power that surge. But gas and energy prices, they've been the biggest inflation drivers by far. We all live in the same world, so it's kind of it affects all of us. Some hit are a little harder than others. The Federal Reserve has indicated it will likely gradually increase interest rates until inflation levels off. Now, a hike of about three quarters of a percentage point that's expected later on this month. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has acknowledged that raising interest rates too quickly, it could trigger a recession. But Powell says runaway inflation poses a greater long term threat to the economy. Well, in the meantime, food banks having trouble keeping up with those rising costs. Many say they're seeing a surge in demand. This as donations are dwindling. Right now we are seeing a, a confluence of forces that are coming together and we're experiencing demand you know, as high as pretty much we've seen at any point during the pandemic. Michael Altfest, a spokesperson for the Alameda County Community Food Bank in California, says the walk-up line, it's grown by about 100 to 150 people just over the last couple of months. They say they're also spending about $1.5 million per month in food purchases to keep people fed. Well, here in Idaho, the gem state, not seeing a significant decrease in gas prices. Now, those prices are down about seven cents from a week ago. The state's average now at 518 a gallon. That's nearly 57 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will still be Costco. You can find it for about $5.09 a gallon there. And if you're looking for other modes of transportation this summer, there are about 50 new e-bikes around Boise now. You can rent the electric assist wheels anytime, day or night. Now, through October, your first 30 minutes, they're free. If you use the promo code Ride Valley Bike while renting it on the Valley Bike app, Valley Regional Transit is overseeing this pilot program, which has been a couple of years in the making, with the company providing drop mobility. Well, Ada County home prices are down about 16%. That drop is comparing June to the last. Now, home prices also dropped slightly from May to June, more than 600,000 in May to 592,000 in the month of June. That's still about 12.8% higher than the year before. 
And a heads up to renters, make sure to check your lease. It may have something that doesn't conform to Idaho law. Now, Jesse Tree, which is an advocacy group that works with landlords and tenants in the Treasure Valley, they say they're seeing a lot of lease agreements that may be violating the law. So what should you know? You can't sign away your right to a jury trial if you're evicted or for that matter, your right to sue your landlord. So tenants and landlords have their rights and responsibilities under Idaho code and landlords cannot legally require tenants to waive those rights under the lease agreement. Landlords must also give you a 30 day notice if they increase your rent by 10% or more than the monthly contract rent. Also, make sure to wash out for leases that allow landlords to enter your apartment without notice. Now, Idaho law says they can't show up unannounced. Well, officials investigating an officer involved shooting this morning. It began in Napa near a Middleton Road intersection. It's where a man reportedly shot another driver. That driver was able to call 911 and a Canyon County Sheriff's deputy did catch up with the suspected car and driver near Cassia Street and Carter Road. Now that's when the suspect got out of the car and the deputy shot him. Now that deputy is on administrative leave as per policy. The task force is now looking at both shootings. Well, Boise police noticing a change in crime patterns as temperatures are heating up. They tell us in the summer they see more traffic violation and more crimes of opportunity. Those are thefts that occur when you leave your garage door open or your car unlocked or a bike outside. They also say staying busy along. They're also staying busy along the Boise River, citing floaters for, of course, alcohol and drugs, fighting, disturbing the peace, littering and illegal parking. And speaking of the heat, our toasty temperatures are taxing on the body. They can even be deadly. That's especially for people living out on the streets. CBS 2's Angela Kernel. She went along with a group doing outreach to those on the streets. Exhausting, absolutely exhausting. Your body gets so worn down and just so tired, but your mind can't stop because you're in a like situation that you have to get out of. Two weeks ago, Deborah Thornton lost her home of eight years, forced to sell her trailer after receiving a seven day eviction notice. I just lost everything that I owned. Yeah. Now she's living on the streets of Boise where there is little relief from the relentless heat. I've learned if when you stop sweating altogether, that's when you got to worry because that's heat stroke. And when your muscles start to cramp, that's heat stroke. I was doing that off and on all day yesterday. Cassidy Landry now has a home, but she spent the better part of 2019 living out of her car after losing her job. Even today, like I'm still, my body's still exhausted from it. It's a constant stress mentally and physically. Moving her car from one shady parking spot to another was her reality all that summer. Finding places to park because you know some places they don't let you park there and having to go through that being vulnerable with somebody saying hey you know I'm homeless like do you mind if I park in your parking lot because you have a really good tree. The nonprofit catch is reaching out to the homeless during this week of excessive heat bringing them water, sunscreen and snacks at the same time, directing them to resources and cooling centers. A lot of people experiencing homelessness are in poor health. They're older, so that creates a situation in which uh, things could go bad real quick. Deborah is one of the approximately 430 families that are living on the streets or in a car here in Ada County. That's according to data tracked by catch and the sad fact is they can't reach them all. There absolutely could be somebody who doesn't make it through this weather. And for Deborah and Cassidy, their biggest challenge is just finding enough water to get through the day. No matter how much water you drink, you're not getting enough water. If it weren't for these people that just left with water, there would be no water to drink, you know, and it is very difficult. Again, that was Angela Kernel reporting. Now you can help catch in its outreach efforts by dropping off things like bottled water, reusable water, snacks, sunglasses, sunscreen, especially, or gas gift cards at their office. That's 511 South Americana in Boise. We have more ways that you can help online. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, it is summertime, so it's tick season. We don't want to think about them, but they're out there. And ticks, they can hit you right on your pets or even on you. Now, the Idaho Humane Society says they're seeing more dogs coming in with ticks. And ticks, they can even jump off your dog and onto you or make your pet sick. So the danger of removing a tick is um, a couple different things to think about. You want to make sure that you get the whole tick, um, so not leaving like the head or a part of the body. Um, you also want to protect yourself.
Now, if you do notice that your dog has a tick, you should take them to the vet and think about texting or testing them for tick diseases. Now, if you do try to remove a tick, do not touch it directly. Think about wearing gloves or actually physically wear them better guess. Use tweezers or tick pullers to remove that tick. Ugh. All right. Well, now that I am itching and thinking about ticks, let's send it over to Vasily Varlamos because it is heating up luckily or well, sadly, not enough to kill all those ticks out there, but many people wanting to get out and enjoy the day. Vasily, what can we expect? Well, we can expect some high temperatures for sure. Hopefully that'll kill all the ticks out there. On the West Coast, we are seeing those high temperatures, 102 degrees in Boise, 100, 103 degrees in Redding, and then over in Salt Lake, 101 degrees as well. And as you can see up there in Boise, 102 degrees. So a lot of high temperatures on the West Coast. In Futurecast, you can see why there is low pressure down here and as well up in Canada, which is creating that lane of high pressure in our area. And that is what's bringing those high temperatures. You can see that last all the way through Saturday as well. We get a little bit of cloud cover, but not too much. And that's what's resulting in these high temperatures that we are going to expect today. 103 in Emmett, 103 in Mountain Home as well. Boise and Caldwell are looking at 102. Over in the mountains, McCall's looking at 90 today as the high. And Idaho City as well, 97 degrees there. So high temperatures across the board. We can expect that the next few days as well. Very high temperatures, lots of sun and heat as well. And those 100 degree temperatures will last through Sunday. And then we can expect mid 90s earlier next week. And we'll see that right here as the temperature for the temperature trend 103 today is going to look like the hottest day of the week but we'll drop down to 100 on Friday it'll jump back up to 102 on Saturday but continue to drop down going into Monday where it is 96 degrees there all right buckle up toasty day ahead if you want to be cool head out early speaking of early it is 5 11 in the morning CBS 2 news and news talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long Live look out there this morning, still looking very good. Smooth sailing on all of our roads, main roads and secondary roads. Some good news there for your Thursday. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, people and homes unaccounted for this morning after floodwaters tear through communities in Virginia. A look at the damage this morning. Plus, some good news as crews battle the Washburn fire. What officials say is no longer under threat of getting caught up in the blaze. And it's our favorite time of the morning. Time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to a survey, when you move, you're least likely to take this with you. All right, folks, what is it? The answer, books. Oh, that breaks my heart. All right, now for today's question, nearly 20% of people have never done this summer activity. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? Well, folks, here's our CBS 2 adventure weather for today. Over in Idaho City, 97 degrees is expected today, and tonight that'll cool off to 50 degrees, but tomorrow the heat will continue as well, 95 degrees over in Idaho City. And then over in Payette, 102 degrees expected today. Ooh, a scorcher. Tonight it'll be 71 degrees as well, and that will heat up tomorrow to 100 degrees. So triple-digit temperatures over in the western part of the valley. We can expect those high temperatures throughout the Treasure Valley as well. Thank you, Vasily. 515 on your Thursday. Roughly 40 people unaccounted for this morning after floodwater swept through parts of Virginia. Now, officials say water began rising Tuesday night, damaging or washing away more than 100 homes. Now, CBS 2's Bradley Blackburn has the latest. In the valleys of Buchanan County in far western Virginia, the water rose so fast Tuesday night residents struggled to get out. Got water on. That's how far up it got. The flood was powerful enough to push entire homes off their foundations, sweep away trucks, and leave a community reeling. The people lost everything. And it's it's sad. This mom was home with her toddler when the water started rising. Me and my son, my two year old son, were on an air mattress in the floor and we were floating and the water was up maybe this high. 
Significant damage was seen stretching more than 10 miles. The sheriff's office reports as many as 150 homes were flooded or washed away and roads were wiped out. Water's been in the road, houses in the road, and it's just a mess. Virginia's governor has declared a state of emergency to assist with response and recovery operations. The governor's office said the same community was hit by flooding last year and was still in the process of recovering. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Now officials, they say no deaths have been reported and are hopeful that dozens of residents unaccounted for will be found by phone service and electricity when they're restored to neighborhoods experiencing those outages. Now it is a predominantly rural area. Rescue crews are also going home to home this morning. Well, here on the West Coast, the Washburn Fire in Yosemite National Park, it's now sitting at 23% contained. That blaze now over 4,200 acres. But crews are hopeful their efforts are paying off. They say the decades-old trees will survive. The containment we have is where it matters most. The Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias, our containment around there is strong, and it looks like those trees are going to get out of this with, without any serious damage. Yes, it's great news. Now, with that historic landmark in good standing, the focus it now shifts to the east and the Sierra National Forest, where that fire is spreading. There's about a thousand fire personnel continuing to make lines and water retardant drops. The cause of the fire still under investigation, but the park superintendent said it was a human started fire. Yeah, a good reminder again as we're heading out thinking of, you know, these triple digit temperatures, maybe not the temperatures you want to recreate in, but if you are going to be outside doing anything, you just want to make sure that you're being safe, especially if you know you have campfires, that sort of thing. Overall, yeah, you just, 100%. Also, it's so dry. <laughs> also, just making sure you're healthy yourself as well. Yeah. Stay hydrated out there with all these 100 degree temperatures because it's going to continue to be hot. Oh, yeah, no, I think we picked up another triple digit day while I was off. So, yeah, no, they keep on coming. It's it's normal for this time of the year, but you want to make sure you have your air conditioning ready to go, checking on those vulnerable groups. And also, of course, my fur personal favorite, make sure all your fur babies are taken so. care of. We're walking them in the early morning hours, the late hours. So as far as today, what can we expect? Is our warm up super quick? Because... As soon as I step out the door, that sun comes up. You could already start to feel that radiation oh, yeah. it'll, beating down on you. It'll start to heat up throughout the day. Uh, yeah. Right now, it's already at the low, but the low is sitting really, really high as well. Yeah, and we'll see these high temperatures as well start to heat up at around 4 to 5 today. And that's where you're going to see these 100-degree temperatures. Whew, it's going to be a scorcher in the Treasure Valley. Take a look at this. 103 in Emmett, 102 in Boise, 104 over there in Eastern Oregon and Ontario. So all around in the Treasure Valley, just some hot temperatures. And we can expect that through the next few days as well. Very high temperatures, lots of sun and heat as well. 100 degree temperatures will last through Sunday. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. But the mid 90s will also return early next week. So the temperatures right now in Boise, we're all sitting about the lows right now. Look low 70s, high 60s in Boise, it's 67 right now. So those lows aren't going to be sticking around today as you saw. And so in the seven day forecast today, high temperatures throughout the week. 102 is looking like it's going to be the hottest to this week and we will continue to have 100 degree temperatures going into Saturday and Sunday. It'll drop off Monday and Tuesday as well, but Wednesday it'll continue to heat up at 98 degrees. And over in the mountains, we're seeing a similar trend as well. High 80s through the weekend into Sunday, and then by Monday, it'll cool off to 82. But that heat will come back as well. Tuesday, it'll be 86, and then Wednesday, it'll be 88. So all above the average high temperatures throughout the week, both in the mountains and the Treasure Valley, we can expect that sunshine to be shining throughout the week around the Gem State. Oh, thank you, Vasily. Yeah, head for the heel hills if you want some cooler temperatures. It is 520 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning, seeing a little first light to kick off your Thursday. Everything's still looking good out there on the roads. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a new COVID vaccine may be available soon. Why officials say it may make a difference as we enter yet another wave. Plus, fighting addiction, the new pill and study that indicates may, that may help even more people.
be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Thursday. Welcome back. An update from the state on our COVID cases. We currently have 1,484 new cases reported yesterday. That brings our state's total up to over 470,000 confirmed and probable cases. So far, 4,994 people have died due to complications with the virus. Nearly 52% of those eligible are now fully vaccinated. And you might be able to get a fourth kind of COVID vaccine in the U.S. soon. The vaccine from Novavax now has FDA emergency youth authorization. Now, the CDC is expected to recommend it as soon as later this month. Now, it's unlike the other three vaccines because it uses protein fragments to teach the body how to fight COVID. It's great that we have additional options, especially for something that's slightly different. The latest variants weren't around when Novavax developed its vaccine, but the company says it appears to have broad immune system response to the BA5 Omicron offshoot. Now that is good news because it's the dominant variant right now and the most contagious one yet. Well, a new study shows a pill could help people sleep might also play a role in the future of addiction treatment. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains exactly how it works. Hey there, everybody. This small study from the National Institutes of Health suggests a drug used for people who can't sleep might make a big difference in opioid recovery. The drug in this new study is a common medication already on the market. It appears to help in the withdrawal time from addiction. They are looking at a, a new drug, a relatively new drug, called Suvorexant or Belsomra. Um, that, that treats insomnia. That's right, sleep. What makes it different than the arsenal of medications already used to treat addiction is that it's not a hypnotic medication. That means it works on something in the body called the orexin system. It regulates a set of vital body functions, including the body's sleep-wake cycle. Dr. Sam Badron, the medical director of Ohio's TriHealth Addictive Services Program, told me when people try and kick opioids, they have terrible insomnia, especially in the early days of withdrawal. There is this drive for them to seek the medication that has kept them calm and stable. And, and, and such th 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 that insomnia is sadly what oftentimes leads to them giving up. This medication appeared to help those immediately after tapering off opioids, not only to sleep significantly more, but it also reduced cravings for the addictive drug. Now, just a note, this study did not include many women, but researchers say if larger trials hold true, this drug or others that target orexin do show promise in treating addiction. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a new way to travel around Boise. The e-bike pilot program officially underway. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all of your favorites, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is nearly 20% of people have never done this summer activity. What is it, folks? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, inflation seeing a record increase. The plan to keep prices from going up any further. Plus, high heat impacting some of Idaho's most vulnerable. How one group is lending a hand to our homeless. And staying safe during tick season. Who? What to know if you or your furry friend encounters the pests. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, folks, right now in Boise, it is at its low point right now, 67 degrees as the low, and that is just because the sun is not out right now. We are going to see high temperatures today, but right now the temperatures, like I said, are at their low point throughout the Treasure Valley. We're sitting at the low 70s point right now for much of the Treasure Valley and up in the mountains. We're sitting at a mid 50s point as well. Future cast showing us what we can expect for the next few days. Not very much cloud cover in our area, which is bringing out that sun and those high temperatures. We'll see a little bit of cloud cover through Friday night, but once the sun comes back out on Friday, we won't see very much cloud cover in the Boise area. And Saturday as well, we're not seeing very many clouds at all. So the high temperatures throughout the Treasure Valley today, 
going to be in the triple digits, 103 in Emmett, 103 in Mountain Home as well, and over in eastern Oregon, 104 degrees over in Ontario. So we're seeing high temperatures across the board in the Treasure Valley and over in Boise, 102 degrees as well. So high temperatures across the board. Thank you, Vasily. Yeah, we're going to heat up quick, folks. Buckle on in. It is 531 on your Thursday. Seeing first light out there as we take a live look out there on our roads on I-84. Everything looking good, running smoothly. That's what we like to see this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, inflation, it doesn't appear to be going anywhere just yet. Consumer prices, they surged more than 9% in the U.S. for the month of June. That's the largest year-to-year -year increase in over four decades. Now, higher rents and increased food costs are helping with power that surge, but it's gas and energy prices that have been the biggest inflation drivers by far. We're all living in the same world, so it's kind of as it affects all of us. Some hit are a little harder than others. The Federal Reserve has indicated it will likely gradually increase interest rates until inflation levels off, they say. Now, a hike of three quarters of a percentage point is expected later on this month. In the meantime, Federal Chairman Jerome Powell has acknowledged that raising interest rates too quickly, it could trigger a recession. But Powell says runaway inflation, it poses a greater long term threat to the economy. Now, in the meantime, food banks are having trouble keeping up with those rising costs. Many say they are seeing a surge in demand. This as donations are dwindling. Right now, we are seeing a, a confluence of forces that are coming together and we're experiencing demand you know, as high as pretty much we've seen at any point during the pandemic. Yeah, that's Michael Altfest. He's a spokesperson for the Alameda County Community Food Bank in California. He says the walk up line for them has grown between 100 to 150 people just over the last couple of months. He says they're also spending about 1.5 million per month in food purchases to keep those people fed. Well, here in Idaho, the gem state not seeing a significant decrease in gas prices. Prices are down just seven cents from a week ago. The state's average now sitting at 518 a gallon. That's still about nearly 57 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, that's still going to be Costco. You can find it for 509 a gallon there. Well, if you're looking for other modes of transportation this summer, there's about 50 new e-bikes out and about Boise now. You can rent the electric assist wheels anytime, day or night. Now, through October, your first 30 minutes are free. If you use the promo code Ride Valley Bike while renting it on the Valley Bike app. Now, Valley Regional Transit, they're off for overseeing this pilot program, which has been a couple of years in the making, providing the company with drop mobility. Well, this morning, officials, they're investigating an officer-involved shooting. It began in Napa near a Middleton Road intersection where a man reportedly shot another driver. That driver was able to call 911. A Canyon County Sheriff's deputy, they caught up with the suspected car and driver near Cassius Street and Carter Road in Napa. That's when the suspect got out of the car and the deputy shot him. Now, the deputy is on administrative leave as per policy, and a task force is now investigating both of those shootings. Well, Boise police noticing a change in crime patterns as temperatures are heating up this summer. They tell us the summer they see more traffic violations and more crimes of opportunity. Now, those are thefts that occur when you leave your garage door open or your car unlocked or a bike outside. They say they're also staying busy along the Boise River, citing floaters for both drugs, alcohol, fighting, disturbing the peace, littering and illegal parking. And speaking of the heat, our toasty temperatures, they're taxing on your body. They can even be deadly, especially for those living on the streets. Our CBS2 Angela Kerndall went along with a group doing outreach to those on our streets. Exhausting, absolutely exhausting. Your body gets so worn down and just so tired, but your mind can't stop because you're in a like situation that you have to get out of. Two weeks ago, Deborah Thornton lost her home of eight years forced to sell her trailer after receiving a seven day eviction notice. I just lost everything that I owned. Yeah. Now she's living on the streets of Boise where there is little relief from the relentless heat. I've learned if when you stop sweating altogether, that's when you got to worry because that's heat stroke. And when your muscles start to cramp, that's heat stroke. I was doing that off and on all day yesterday. 
Cassidy Landry now has a home, but she spent the better part of 2019 living out of her car after losing her job. Even today, like I'm still, my body's still exhausted from it. It's a constant stress mentally and physically. Moving her car from one shady parking spot to another was her reality all that summer. Finding places to park because you know some places they don't let you park there and having to go through that being vulnerable with somebody saying hey you know I'm homeless like do you mind if I park in your parking lot because you have a really good tree. The nonprofit catch is reaching out to the homeless during this week of excessive heat bringing them water sunscreen and snacks at the same time directing them to resources in cooling centers. A lot of people experiencing homelessness are in poor health. They're older, so that creates a situation in which uh, things could go bad real quick. Deborah is one of the approximately 430 families that are living on the streets or in a car here in Ada County. That's according to data tracked by Catch. And the sad fact is they can't reach them all. There absolutely could be somebody who doesn't make it through this weather. And for Deborah and Cassidy, their biggest challenge is just finding enough water to get through the day. No matter how much water you drink, you're not getting enough water. If it weren't for these people that just left, with water, there would be no water to drink, you know, and it is very difficult. Again, that's Angela Kerndall reporting. Now, you can help catch in its outreach efforts by dropping off things they say like bottled water, reusable water bottles, snacks, sunglasses, even sunscreen or gas gift cards at their office. That's 511 South Americana in Boise. Now, you can find more ways to help online. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, it is summertime, so tick season, it's upon us. Now, ticks, they can hitch a ride on you or even your pets. Ooh, makes my skin crawl. Now, the Idaho Humane Society says they're seeing more dogs coming in with ticks. And keep in mind, ticks, they can jump off of your dog onto you or make your pet sick. So the danger of removing a tick is um, a couple different things to think about. You want to make sure that you get the whole tick, um, so not leaving like the head or a part of the body. Um, you also want to protect yourself. Now, if you do notice that your dog has a tick, you should take it to the vet. Think about testing them for tick diseases. It's a good idea. And if you do try to remove the tick yourself, don't touch the tick directly and wear gloves. Use tweezers to pull the tick out. And that's probably the easiest way to do it, to be honest. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to talk about ticks, Vasily. Yeah, I'm making so my skin gross. crawl. Ugh. I, I like to go out and hike. I just don't like to think about the ticks, but it is good to keep top of mind, especially if you're out there with your pooch. Maybe not today because obviously those temperatures, you're going to be heading out literally like right now or maybe in the next hour mm -hmm. if you do want to head out. So if you are heading out the door this morning, at least what can we expect before that heat really starts to crank up? Well, we can expect clear skies, but that heat is going to heat up quickly. Yeah. It is going to, temperatures are going to rise real fast today and it's going to hit the century mark today. Oh, yep. All right. Another one bites the dust. At least we're not Death Valley. Oh, okay? 100%. 117 <laughs> well, I will, I will over that. Death Valley. Super hot over there and all across much of California as well. Over in Boise, we're looking at 102 degrees, but much of the West Coast is looking very hot. 101 in Salt Lake, 104 in Las Vegas, and over in Denver, 97 degrees as well. So we're expecting high temperatures across across much of the Western United States. Futurecast showing us why there is low pressure down here and also up in Canada, which is causing that high pressure ridge that we are seeing in our neck of the woods that is bringing those high temperatures and those clear skies that we've been seeing the past couple days. And we will see that as well going into Sunday. So the high temperatures today, we're looking at triple digits across the board in the Treasure Valley, 104 over in Eastern Oregon in Ontario, 103 in Emmett and 102 in Caldwell. We're looking at 102 in Boise as well, 103 in Mountain Homes. So high temperatures across I-84. What to expect for the next few days? Very high temperatures, lots of sun and heat. 100 degree temperatures throughout Sunday and then the mid 90s we will see early next week. Here's the temperature trend for the Treasure Valley. Thursday, it will be the hottest day, 103 degrees, but it'll cool down to 100, which cool down, it's still 100 degrees, super hot in our neck of the woods. Saturday, it'll jump up to 102, and then we will drop down to 96 on Monday, but still those scorching hot temperatures.
Oh, thank you, Vasily. Already starting to sweat and it. The sun's not even fully up yet. All right. It is 540 on your Thursday. Coolest part of the day right now. And if, again, if you're heading out the door, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking really good out there. Yeah, like what we like to see on your Thursday. Our main roads, secondary roads, seeing some smooth sailing. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is nearly 20% of people have never done this summer activity. All right, what are we thinking, Vasily? Uh, well, I'm thinking maybe hiking, like maybe you yep. don't like the outdoors very much. <laughs> you don't like the heat and you want to stay inside a little bit. So maybe hiking only 20%. That's not that many. people. Yeah, no, in Idaho. Yeah, no, that's what we got to keep in mind. It is a low percentage. See, I was thinking maybe something on the water, like maybe water skiing, uh, wakeboarding, maybe. Well, most people have kneeboarded, I would like to think, but but maybe not. Actually, <laughs> now that I think of it, there's some people I've actually met quite a few people lately that haven't been able to swim, never learned how to swim. Mm -hmm. Surprising me because, yeah. you know, we have so many so much water so much to enjoy around the area. Oh, Steve says water skiing. Oh, one of my favorites. You can't be sad on a water ski. You've heard that joke, right? <laughs> so you can't, you can't yeah, frown on a water ski. A I'm not a big water skier, <laughs> but I've definitely heard it when I'm out oh, boating with my friends. Lots of fun. Okay, let's see what else they have to say. Yes, floating a river. That's tubing a river is a code mm -hmm. word for floating a river. Yeah, one of our favorite things to do in my family. Actually, it's our family. Um, every year we get together in the summer and go float awesome. the Coeur d'Alene River. So much fun. If you've never done that, you got to, especially Boise River here in town. We are lucky. Lynn says camping. Great guess. I can't imagine someone not camping. You got to try it. Oh, maybe if you've never been out there, never <laughs> kind of scare the wilderness, you know? But, yeah, huh. you never know. But at least right now, maybe not the best time to be camping in these triple digits. Yeah, looking towards fall for heading up to the mountains. Or, I mean, I guess you could find cooler temperatures now, too. So if you think you know the answer, again, we still have many opportunities. Another hour and 15 minutes to guess. Head to our Facebook page or Twitter to guess. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, more people coming, after, or coming out with reactions after a video of the shooting in Uvalde, Texas was leaked. Why one of the state senators is calling the police response indefensible. Here's a look at your CBS2 adventure weather forecast and in your neck of the woods in Idaho City, 97 degrees expected today, so a very hot day. Tonight it'll drop down to 50 degrees, but tomorrow the heat's not going to go away. 95 degrees as well. And then over in the western part of the valley, over in Payette, 102 degrees expected today, so triple digit temperatures. That'll drop down to 71 tonight, but tomorrow those triple digits will return 100 degrees expected as well. Thank you, Vasily. It is 545 on your Thursday. Now, the leaked video of the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, it's drawing in reaction from across the country this morning. Now, Texas Senator Ted Cruz also sharing his thoughts on the video. He says the way police responded to the Uvalde shooting is, quote, indefensible, calling the video horrifying. Cruz went on to say, quote, it's clear law enforcement should have done, gone in and stopped the shooter much earlier. I think there needs to be transparency, there needs to be accountability, and there is simply no good explanation for law enforcement waiting 77 interminable minutes. It's not clear what consequences, if any, officers may face from that delayed confrontation. The Texas House Investigative Committee is set to release its preliminary report any day now. Well, on Wednesday night, last night, the House passed legislation establishing an Amber Alert-like system for active shooter events nationwide. Now, that legislation passed 260 to 169. Last month, the Active Shooter Alert Act was shot down by the House 259 to 162, with two-thirds needed for passage. Now, this time, it only needed a simple majority. The bill now heads to the Senate floor. And turning to developing news this morning, WNBA star Brittany Griner, her trial in Russia, it's set to continue today. Now, the New York Times reports that Griner is scheduled to appear in a Russian court again Thursday. This comes after Griner pleaded guilty to drudge, 
drug charges just last week. Now, Griner was arrested in the Moscow airport back in February after authorities said they found vape cartridges with cannabis oil in her bag. Now, her lawyers have said she mistakenly packed the cartridges while she was in a rush. Well, switching gears, the U.S. is accusing Russia of committing war crimes against Ukrainian citizens. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, says Russia has forcibly deported at least 900,000 Ukrainian citizens from their homes now into Russian territory. In a statement, Blinken said the deportations, they're unlawful and that they breached the Fourth Geneva Convention. Russia has said that one and a half million Ukrainians were evacuated to Russia for what they say is their own safety. Well, President Biden continues his Middle East trip with a second day in Israel. The president is slated to receive the Israeli Medal of Honor and attend the opening ceremonies of Maccabi, the Maccabi Games. It's a global competition of international Jewish athletes. Now, on Friday, he meets with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas before traveling to Saudi Arabia for the final leg of his trip. Yeah, I was going to say. Feel it. <laughs> I don't, it's feeling very hot out there right now. Luckily, not as hot as the Middle East. Have you been looking oh, at yeah. those temperatures over there? Oh, the, it's the crazy. heat wave I mean, happening? Yeah, it's over 110 <laughs> degrees. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Some, it's some areas hitting 120. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we can at least be thankful that we are not over there. We at least have a little bit of some cool weather still moving mm -hmm. in for the early morning hours, yep. but triple digits still in store. Yep, triple Ooh, digits yeah. are expected today, but right now we're in the low temperature range, but that'll heat up very quickly today, and oh, we yeah. will see those 100 degrees temperatures very very soon. Yep. So I'm curious. Um, so you're from Washington State by yes. the way if you're mm -hmm. seeing this new face out here. He fills in for Roland on the evening so very happy to have you with us this yeah. morning. Seeming very way more awake than I, yeah, than I know than we normally expect. Yeah. Love to have you here. So tell me a little bit about what your favorite outdoor activity is. What, what do you like to do when it's hot? Well maybe not 103 but what, what do you like to do when it's hot out? In well, I like getting in the water like you said raft yep. or float in the river. It sounds super fun. I'm new to the town right now but I've already gotten on the river and it's it's awesome. It's such a fun time out there and you get to cool off very easily. No, I love that. That's something that many people are probably going to be thinking about today. So let's take a look at the forecast. Oh, it's a hot one in yep. store. So right now, temperatures are in the low range right now. That's the lowest it's going to be today. We're looking at high 60s to low 70s as the lows today on I-84 and in the Treasure Valley. 70 in Caldwell, 70 in Nampa, and Boise is going to be 67 as the lows right now. But what to expect for the next few days? It's going to be hot. Very high temperatures with a lot of sun and heat. The temperature, 100 degree temperatures will last through Sunday and the mid 90s are expected earlier next week. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, the high temperatures today are all going to be in the hundreds pretty much in our neck of the woods over in the mountains. 90 degrees as expected and in Idaho City, 97 degrees, so very high temperatures over there. Radar showing us little to no clouds in our area, and the extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, it is going to be hot. Through the weekend, as I said, triple digit temperatures, that'll drop off to 95 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. And over in the mountains, we can see that similar trend as well. High 80s through the weekend, and then into Monday, it'll drop to 82, which is about the average for then, but it'll continue to heat up through Tuesday and Wednesday, above average 86 degrees on Tuesday and 88 degrees on Wednesday. Okay, so relief coming on Monday. Until then, guys, we got to buckle up and get on through. It is 551 on your Thursday. Live look outside CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Still looking good out there this morning. Hey, couldn't ask for uh, at least a better report. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, if you lost anything this ski season, a teen in Colorado may want to speak with you. How he's working to return some re-emerging items. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 554 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Winter sports, they've long been over. And now that the snow has melted, lots of things starting to reappear. And that includes some items people lost while skiing the previous summer, or previous winter at least. Marshall Zellinger shares the story of a teen who's out looking for those lost items in hopes of returning them to their rightful owners. 
you can search for Miles looking for a lost item on a mountain. All the colorful cards are credit cards. Or you could let Miles search for you. During the summer, I go underneath the chairlifts and uh, go looking for lost items. 16-year-old Miles Vale finds what gets unveiled once the snow melts at Keystone. I find phones, AirPods, ski passes, all sorts of random things. I remember the feeling that something had left my pockets. Andrew Knoll in Boca Raton, Florida, lost his iPhone during an annual ski trip to Colorado this past winter. My cell phone was like our, our lifeline of making it back to the right spot at the right time. He and his buddy found their way home, even without the phone he lost at Keystone. The phone recovered months later by Vale, Miles Vale. I found someone's phone. It had a picture of a dog on it and the caller actually had the person's phone number on it. So he asked me what my background was. And honestly, I didn't recall if it was a picture of me and my significant other or it was a picture of Alan, which was the dog. So I was able to take the phone number off the collar and contact him via the number on the collar, which I think is pretty cool. When I realized that that's what he did, I knew like this was a special type of person. Andrew's phone is one of 11 miles found. I have two left but waiting for those people to respond to me. Like the person whose phone powers up to a lost iPhone screen with a phone number. All Miles asks for in return is the cost of shipping. It was like pure altruism, like the act of going the extra mile without the expectation of getting anything in return. And I know that, that that's a different type of person. But if you're gonna reward him, I mean, reward him. I've had people pay me like three bucks for their phone. It's like, I found your really expensive phone and that's all you're gonna give me. And it's like, well, at least they gave me something. Andrew sent Miles a gift card. Turns out Andrew had phone insurance, paid 200 for a new one, and traded his found phone for 400 He actually basically gave me $200. His hard work awarded me $200. So I split that in half with him, which is still selfish of me. I should have gave him the whole damn 200 bucks. <laughs> like I said, Miles doesn't ask for anything but shipping. I just do it because it's fun to clean up the community and help return people's last items. Still to come on CBS2 News this morning, a new way to travel around Boise, the new e-bike pilot program. You're watching CBS2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll see you back here with your headlines at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS2 News, inflation seeing a record increase. The plan to keep prices from going up any further. Plus, high heat impacting some of Idaho's most vulnerable. How one group is lending a hand to our homeless. And staying safe during tick season. Who? What to know if you or your furry friend encounters the pests. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Thursday, July 14th, 2022. Very mild as you're stepping out the door this morning, but another triple digit day is in store. Let's bring in Vasily Varlamos for a look at your morning forecast. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. Yep, right now, here's a live look at Boy downtown Boise. We're sitting at the low right now at 67 degrees, but that'll soon heat up as the day comes in and the sun comes out. Temperatures right now, as I said, they're in the lows, 73 in Ontario, and then we're sitting at low 60s, pretty much, through, or high 60s, pretty much throughout the Treasure Valley, 73 in Twin Falls there. And then up in the mountains, we're sitting at 57 degrees in McCall. Futurecast showing us what we can expect for the next few days. Little to no cloud cover. We may see some clouds during Friday morning and throughout Friday night, but those will soon leave once the sun comes out and the day begins on Friday. And there's pretty much no clouds as well going into Saturday. The high temperatures today in the Treasure Valley, we are seeing 100 degree temperatures pretty much across the board, 103 in Mountain Home, 102 in Boise, 104 over there in Ontario. So triple digit temperatures can be expected. Today, your CBS2 adventure weather cast, 8 a.m. is going to be 74 degrees, but that'll continue to heat up all the way up to 102 by 5 p.m.
Oh, yeah, heating up quick. It is 601 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning and everything running smoothly. Main roads, secondary roads are moving on along. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, inflation, it doesn't appear to be going anywhere just yet. Consumer price surged more than 9% in the U.S. in the month of June. That's the largest year-to-year -year increase in over four decades. Now, higher rents and increased food costs help power that surge, but gas and energy prices have been the biggest inflation drivers by far. We are all live in the same world, so it kind of it affects all of us. Some hit her a little harder than others. The Federal Reserve has indicated it will likely gradually increase interest rates until inflation levels off. Now, a hike of about three quarters of a percentage point is expected later on this month. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has acknowledged that raising interest rates too quickly could trigger a recession. But Powell says runaway inflation poses a greater long term threat to our economy. Well, here in Idaho, the gem state not seeing a significant decrease in gas prices. They are down about seven cents from a week ago. The state's average sitting at 518 a gallon. That's nearly 57 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up that will be Costco. You can find it for 509 a gallon there. And if you're looking for other modes of transportation this summer, there are 50 e-bikes around Boise now. You can rent the electric assist wheels anytime, day or night. Now through October, your first 30 minutes, they're free on Valley Ride. Now if you use the promo code Valley Bike while renting it on the Valley Bike app, Valley Regional Transit is overseeing the pilot program, which has been a couple of years in the making with the providing with the providing company Mobility Drop or Drop Mobility. Pardon me. Now, Ada County home sales, they're down 16 percent. That drop comes from comparing this June to last. Now, home prices also dropped slightly from the month of May to June from more than 600,000 in May to 592,000 in June. Now keep in mind that's still about 12.8% higher than the year before. Well, a heads up to renters, check your lease. It may have something in it that doesn't conform to Idaho law. Now Jesse Tree, they're an advocacy group that works with both landlords and tenants. They say they're seeing a lot of lease agreements that may be violating the law. So what should you know? You can't sign your away your right to a jury trial if you're evicted or for that matter, your right to sue your landlord. So tenants and landlords have their rights and responsibilities under Idaho code and landlords cannot legally require tenants to waive those rights under the lease agreement. Now, landlords must also give you a 30 day notice if they increase your rent by 10 percent more than the monthly contract rent. Also, watch out for leases that allow landlords to enter your apartment without notice. Idaho law says they can't show up unannounced. Well, officials this morning are investigating an officer involved shooting. It began in Napa near a Middleton Road intersection where a man reportedly shot another driver. Now that driver was able to call 911. A Canyon County Sheriff deputy caught up with the suspected car and driver near Casha Street and Carter Road. Now that is when the suspect got out of the car and the deputy shot him. The deputy, he's on administrative leave as per policy. The task force is now looking at both of those shootings. Well, Boise police noticing a change in crime patterns as temperatures heat up. They tell us in the summer they see more traffic violations and more crimes of opportunity. There are also thefts that occur like leaving your garage door open or your car unlocked or a bike outside. They say they're also staying busy along the Boise River, citing floats for alcohol, drugs, fighting, disturbing the peace, littering and illegal parking. And speaking of the heat, our toasty temperatures, they're taxing on the body and they can even be deadly. That's especially for people living on our streets. CBS 2's Angela Carndall went along with a group doing outreach to those out on our streets. Exhausting. Absolutely exhausting. Your body gets so worn down and just so tired, but your mind can't stop because you're in a like situation that you have to get out of. Two weeks ago, Deborah Thornton lost her home of eight years, forced to sell her trailer after receiving a seven day eviction notice. I just lost everything that I owned. Yeah. Now she's living on the streets of Boise where there is little relief from the relentless heat. I've learned if when you stop sweating altogether, that's when you got to worry. Because that's heat stroke. 
and when your muscles start to cramp, that's heat stroke. I was doing that off and on all day yesterday. Cassidy Landry now has a home, but she spent the better part of 2019 living out of her car after losing her job. Even today, like I'm still, my body's still exhausted from it. It's a constant stress mentally and physically. Moving her car from one shady parking spot to another was her reality all that summer. Finding places to park because you know some places they don't let you park there and having to go through that being vulnerable with somebody saying hey you know I'm homeless like do you mind if I park in your parking lot because you have a really good tree. The nonprofit catch is reaching out to the homeless during this week of excessive heat bringing them water sunscreen and snacks at the same time directing them to resources and cooling centers. A lot of people experiencing homelessness are in poor health. They're older, so that creates a situation in which uh, things could go bad real quick. Deborah is one of the approximately 430 families that are living on the streets or in a car here in Ada County. That's according to data tracked by Catch. And the sad fact is they can't reach them all. There absolutely could be somebody who doesn't make it through this weather. And for Deborah and Cassidy, their biggest challenge is just finding enough water to get through the day. No matter how much water you drink, you're not getting enough water. If it weren't for these people that just left, with water, there would be no water to drink, you know, and it is very difficult. The good news, though, you can help catch in its outreach efforts, they say, by dropping things off like bottled water, reusable water bottles, snacks, sunglasses and sunscreen or gas gift cards. You can drop that off at their office. That's 511 South Americana in Boise. We do have more ways that you can help. Just head on down to Idaho News. Com. And it is summertime, so of course it's tick season, something we don't like to talk about, but it is important. Keep in mind ticks, they can hit your ride on you or even your pets. Now the Idaho Humane Society says they're seeing more and more dogs coming in with ticks. And keep in mind ticks can jump off your dog and onto you or make your pets sick. So the danger of removing a tick is um, a couple different things to think about. You want to make sure that you get the whole tick. Um, so not leaving like the head or a part of the body. Um, you also want to protect yourself. Now, if you do notice that your dog has a tick, you should take them to the vet and think about testing them for tick diseases. It's a good idea. And if you do try to remove a tick on your own, make sure not to directly touch the tick, wear gloves and use tweezers or tick pullers to actually remove the tick and make sure it's yeah fully gone. Okay, Ugh. don't want to talk about it, making my skin crawl. It's, it's, you know, it's something that happens in the summer. I just don't like to think about it. One thing I don't like to think about either is how many more days of triple digits we have, Vasily. We got a couple coming up as well. It may last through the weekend as well, so high temperature is expected. No, it's good to keep in mind, you know, the good thing is at least we can prepare for these types of situations. But I know myself included with many people out there are going to head to the Boise River today, try to cool down. But as far as heading out the door this morning, what can we expect? Well, we can expect low temperatures right now, but it'll heat up very quickly today. Here's a look at the <laughs> forecast highs over the western United States and we are seeing high temperatures pretty much across the board. Over in Magenta is where you see those 100 degree temperatures and they're all across the western United States. 102 up there in Boise expected today, 101 in Salt Lake, 104 in Las Vegas and whew, 117 in Death Valley. They get that a lot but still 117, that is hot. Futurecast showing us why those high temperatures are here. There's a lot of low pressure both north and south of us that is creating that high pressure ridge that is bringing those hot temperatures and those clear skies that we have been seeing over the past few days and we will continue to see throughout the weekend as well. Here's a look at the high temperatures today across the Treasure Valley. As I said, 102 degrees in Boise, 104 over in Eastern Oregon, Ontario. Wow. 103 in Emmett and 103 in Mountain Home as well. And over in the mountains, 90 degrees expected in McCall and 97 in Idaho City as well. So high temperatures across the board. What to expect for the next few days? Very high temperatures, lots of sun and heat as well. 100 degree temperatures expected through Sunday and mid 90s expected early next week. Now the temperature trend is showing that as well. As I said, 103 today expected, whew, that's gonna be hot. And that'll drop to 100 on Friday, but Saturday will be 102 and we'll see those degree temperatures throughout the weekend. It'll drop to 96 on Monday as shown right there, but still going to be very, very hot for the days to come. 
Yes, it is. Thank you, Vasily. It is 611 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. Oh, good morning, Sarah, and good morning, folks. Get ready to get out the door. It's very quiet. Usually starts off pretty calm. You can see in some of the uh, camera looks the traffic is light in those locations. Same thing, construction zone, Caldwell Nampa for I-84 in the widening zone. Uh, Highway 44, the widening in that stretch between Highway 16 and Linder. No buildups this time of the morning. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, people and homes unaccounted for this morning after floodwaters tear through a community in Virginia. A look at the damage this AM. Plus, some good news as crews battle the Washburn fire. What officials say is no longer under threat of getting caught up in the blaze. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to a survey, when you move, you're least likely to take this with you. That answer, your books, oh, kills me a little bit, but hey, some good reading for maybe those new tenants. Now, today's question, nearly 20% of people have never done this summer activity. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? Well, here's a look at your CBS2 local forecasts. Over in Idaho City, you're seeing 97 degrees today as the high. Tonight, it'll drop down to 50 degrees, but by tomorrow, it'll be 95 degrees. So we're seeing high temperatures over there in Idaho City. And over in the western part of the valley in Payette, 102 degrees expected today. High, high temperatures. Tonight, it'll drop down to 71 degrees, but tomorrow, it'll heat right back up again. Triple-digit temperatures expected as well. 100 degrees tomorrow as the high. Thank you, Vasily. 616 on your Thursday. Roughly 40 people unaccounted for this morning after a flood water swept through parts of Virginia yesterday. Now, officials say the water began rising, damaging and washing away more than 100 homes. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has the latest. In the valleys of Buckhannon County in far western Virginia, the water rose so fast Tuesday night residents struggled to get out. Our water line. That's how far up it got. The flood was powerful enough to push entire homes off their foundations, sweep away trucks, and leave a community reeling. The people lost everything. And it's it's sad. This mom was home with her toddler when the water started rising. Me and my son, my two-year-old son, were on an air mattress in the floor and we were floating and the water was up maybe this high. Significant damage was seen stretching more than 10 miles. The sheriff's office reports as many as 150 homes were flooded or washed away and roads were wiped out. Water's been in the road, and houses in the road, and it's just a mess. Virginia's governor has declared a state of emergency to assist with response and recovery operations. The governor's office said the same community was hit by flooding last year and was still in the process of recovering. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Officials say no deaths have been reported and they're hopeful that the dozens of residents unaccounted for right now will be found because of phone service and electricity are currently unavailable. Those neighborhoods are experiencing power outages. Now it is a predominantly rural area. Rescue crews say that they are also going home. Well, here on the West Coast, the Washburn fire in Yosemite National Park, it's sitting at 23% contained this morning. That blaze now over 4,200 acres, but crews say they're hopeful their efforts are paying off. They say the decades old trees, the sequoias will survive. The containment we have is where it matters most. The Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias, our containment around there is strong, and it looks like those trees are gonna get out of this with, without any serious damage. That's great news. And with these historic landmarks in good standing, the focus now shifts to the east and the Sierra National Forest, where the fire is now spreading. Around 1,000 fire personnel do continue to make lines there and do use water and retardant drops. Now, the cause of the fire still under investigation, but the park superintendent said it was started by humans. 
Uh, kills me to see every year because it is just so dry out there for this time of the year. And, you know, we got to keep that in mind heading into a prolonged triple digits. So as far as heading in, you know, at least heading out the door, you want to make sure that you're prepared. Yeah, 100 percent. Stay hydrated. Stay put the sunscreen on. I mean, when I don't put sunscreen on, I turn into to a tomato. Oh. So it's you got you got to be protected. My last time on the Boise River over the past weekend, I think I'm just now getting over my sunburn. <laughs> it's the initial burn before the tan. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you want to be ready out yeah. there. You want to stay safe 100 yeah no you don't you don't want to go through what i went through guys use your sunscreen uv levels very high very, right now very, very you're high. gonna feel them okay vasily as far as today what's it looking like well we're expecting really high temperatures today especially going to hit the century mark by like 4 or 5 p.m and the look it's low right now like as you see on your screen right now the temperatures are at their low point 67 degrees in boise right now over in Ontario, it's 73 degrees right now. And over in Mountain Home as well, it's around 73 degrees. So we're seeing those low 70s and the high 60s right now as your temperatures. What we can expect for the next few days, very high temperatures, lots of sun, the 100 degree temperatures expected through Sunday. And by Monday, it'll be in the mid 90s, but maybe high 90s as well. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. The high temperatures expected today, 103 in Emmett, 102 expected in Boise, so pretty much high 90s or triple digits expected in the Treasure Valley. Up in the mountains, 90 degrees expected in McCall and 97 degrees expected in Idaho City. Radar showing us the little precipitation, not very much at all, and little clouds as well. We're not seeing very much out there. The extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, as I said, 100 degree temperatures expected through the weekend, 95 degrees expected, it's expected to drop down to on Monday through Tuesday as well. And then on Wednesday, it'll heat up to 98 degrees. So above average temperatures there. And we'll see that in the mountains as well. Above average temperatures expected through Sunday. Monday, it'll drop down to the normal high around 82 degrees. But by Tuesday and Wednesday, it'll continue to heat up all the way up to 88 degrees. Thank you, Vasily. 621 on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Very mild out there this morning. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a look at what's happening on the roads. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking? Still doing very well. I've got things uh, moved along great. 84, even the merge areas in Meridian yet to uh, show up. Still a little too early, but volume will gradually increase. Don't forget those ramp closures are still in effect. At the Franklin 29 interchange in Caldwell near the Flying J, you cannot exit I-84 westbound to that uh, 29 exit. And getting onto the freeway is a no-go to eastbound I-84. Now, once those ramps open in the next uh, couple of weeks, they'll have them open. Then they'll start closing the ramps on the other side of the interchange. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a new COVID vaccine may be available soon. Why officials say it may make a difference as we enter another wave. And fighting addiction, the pill, a new study indicates may help more people. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 624 on your Thursday. Welcome back. You might be able to get a fourth kind of COVID vaccine in the U.S. soon. The vaccine from Novavax now has FDA emergency youth authorization. The CDC is expected to recommend it as soon as later this month. Now, it's unlike the other three vaccines because it uses protein fragments to teach the body how to fight COVID rather than mRNA. Now, the company says it appears to have a broad immune system response to the BA5 Omicron offshoot. That is good news because it's the dominant variant right now and the most contagious one yet. Well, a new study showing a pill helping people that helps people sleep. It may also play a role in the future of addiction treatment. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how it works. Hey there, everybody. This small study from the National Institutes of Health suggests a drug used for people who can't sleep might make a big difference in opioid recovery. The drug in this new study is a common medication already on the market. It appears to help in the withdrawal time from addiction. They are looking at a, a new drug, a relatively new drug, called Suvorexant, or Belsomra, um, that, that treats insomnia. That's right, sleep. What makes it different than the arsenal of medications already used to treat addiction is that it's 
not a hypnotic medication. That means it works on something in the body called the orexin system. It regulates a set of vital body functions, including the body's sleep-wake cycle. Dr. Sam Badron, the medical director of Ohio's Tri Health Addictive Services Program, told me when people try and kick opioids, they have terrible insomnia, especially in the early days of withdrawal. There's this drive for them to seek the medication that has kept them calm and stable. And, and, and such th th that insomnia is sadly what oftentimes leads to them giving up. This medication appeared to help those immediately after tapering off opioids, not only to sleep significantly more, but it also reduced cravings for the addictive drug. Now, just a note, this study did not include many women, but researchers say if larger trials hold true, this drug or others that target orexin do show promise in treating addiction. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a new pilot program underway in Boise. And don't forget about our question of the day. This morning on CBS 2 News, inflation seeing a record increase. The plans to keep prices from going up any further. Plus, high heat impacting some of Idaho's most vulnerable. How one group is lending a hand to our homeless. And staying safe during tick season. Oof. What to know if you or your furry friend encounter those pests. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Is the low is also. Oh no, all good guys. We're having a little bit of technical issues, but we'll be back with Vasily in just a moment. It is 630 on the dot this morning. It is your Thursday CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there, but a reminder, Franklin Road is closed at portions again of the on ramp and off ramp due to some construction. Other than that, we are looking good and running smoothly this morning. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, inflation, it doesn't appear to be going anywhere just yet. Consumer prices, they surged more than 9% in the U.S. just for the month of June. It is the largest year-to-year -year increase in over four decades. Now, higher rents and increased food costs help power that surge, but gas and energy prices have been the biggest inflation drivers by far. We're all living in the same world, so it's kind of it affects all of us. Some hit are a little harder than others. The Federal Reserve has indicated it will likely gradually increase interest rates until inflation levels off. A hike of three quarters of a percentage point is expected later on this month. Meanwhile, Federal Chairman Jerome Powell has acknowledged that raising interest rates too quickly, it could trigger a recession. In the meantime, Powell says that runaway inflation poses a greater long term threat to our economy. Well, here in Idaho, the gem state, not seeing a significant decrease in gas prices. We're down about seven cents from a week ago. The state's average sitting at 518 a gallon. That's still nearly 57 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is still going to be Costco. You can find it for 509 a gallon there. And if you're looking for other modes of transportation this summer, there are 50 new e-bikes around Boise now. You can rent the electrical assist wheels anytime, day or night. Now through October, your first 30 minutes are actually free. So if you use the promo code Ride Valley Bike while renting it on the Valley Bike app, Valley Regional Transit is the one overseeing this pilot program. It's been in the works for a couple of the years, making the providing company drop mobility. Well, officials investigating an officer involved shooting this morning. It began in Napa near a Middleton Road intersection where a man was reportedly sh shot at another driver. That driver was able to call 911. The Canyon County Sheriff's deputy caught up with the suspected car and the driver near Cassia Street and Karcher Road yesterday. Now that's when the suspect got out of the car. The deputy shot him. That deputy is on administrative leave as per policy. A task force is looking at both of those shootings. Well, Boise police noticing a change in crime patterns as temperatures heat on up. 
They tell us the summer during the summer they see more traffic violations and more crimes of opportunity. Now those are thefts that occur when you leave your garage door open, a car unlocked or a bike outside. They're also staying busy along the Boise River, they say, citing floaters for alcohol, drugs, fighting, disturbing the peace, littering and illegal parking. Well, speaking of the heat, our toasty temperatures, they're taxing on the body and they can even be deadly in some cases. That's especially for people living out on our streets. Now, our CBS 2's Angela Kerndall went along with a group who's doing outreach to those out on our streets. Exhausting. Absolutely exhausting. Your body gets so worn down and just so tired, but your mind can't stop because you're in a like situation that you have to get out of. Two weeks ago, Deborah Thornton lost her home of eight years, forced to sell her trailer after receiving a seven day eviction notice. I just lost everything that I owned. Yeah. Now she's living on the streets of Boise where there is little relief from the relentless heat. I've learned if when you stop sweating altogether, that's when you got to worry. Because that's heat stroke. And when your muscles start to cramp, that's heat stroke. I was doing that off and on all day yesterday. Cassidy Landry now has a home, but she spent the better part of 2019 living out of her car after losing her job. Even today, like I'm still, my body's still exhausted from it. It's a constant stress, mentally and physically. Moving her car from one shady parking spot to another was her reality all that summer. Finding places to park because, you know, some places they don't let you park there and having to go through that, being vulnerable with somebody saying, hey, you know, I'm homeless. Like, do you mind if I park in your parking lot? Because you have a really good tree. The nonprofit Catch is reaching out to the homeless during this week of excessive heat, bringing them water, sunscreen, and snacks. At the same time, directing them to resources and cooling centers. A lot of people experiencing homelessness are in poor health. They're older, so that creates a situation in which uh, things could go bad real quick. Deborah is one of the approximately 430 families that are living on the streets or in a car here in Ada County. That's according to data tracked by Catch. And the sad fact is they can't reach them all. There absolutely could be somebody who doesn't make it through this weather. And for Deborah and Cassidy, their biggest challenge is just finding enough water to get through the day. No matter how much water you drink, you're not getting enough water. If it weren't for these people that just left with water, there would be no water to drink, you know, and it is very difficult. And I'll get this. Well, Deborah only had a seven day eviction notice for lease violations in Idaho. The law states that you only need to give your residents a three day eviction notice. Now you can help catch in its outreach efforts. They're asking for people to drop off things like bottled water, reusable water bottles, snacks, sunglasses, sunscreen or gas gift cards at their office. That's 511 South Americana in Boise. We also have more ways you can help online. That's at IdahoNews.com. And it is summertime, so of course it is tick season. My skin's crawling just thinking about it. Now keep in mind, ticks, they can hit your ride on you or your pets. The Idaho Humane Society says they're seeing more and more dogs coming in with those pesky little guys. And ticks, keep in mind, they can jump off your dog onto you or make your pets sick. So the danger of removing a tick is um, a couple different things to think about. You want to make sure that you get the whole tick, um, so not leaving like the head or a part of the body. Um, you also want to protect yourself. Now, if you do notice that your dog has a tick, you should take them to the vet and test them for tick diseases. Now, if you do try to remove a tick on your own, make sure not to touch it directly. Wear gloves and use tweezers or tick pullers to remove them. Yeah, I'm avoiding looking down at the, the screen in front of us because I, I can't watch them. They're so creepy and crawly. They're Ooh. so gross. I'm, I'm happy I've yeah, never seen them in person, but <laughs> they're so gross. Yeah, well, if you are going to be hiking, you know, around the foothills, it is something you may see. So just keep it in mind. Uh, but if you are going to be heading to the foothills, you want to go early this morning. That's oh, the name of the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely head out there right now or very, very soon because this is where the temperatures are going to be the lowest right now. Yeah, the time is now triple digits for at least the next four days, Vasily. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're like? expecting triple digits at least for the next three to four days. Okay. That forecast highs for today on the western part of the United States. We're seeing a lot of high temperatures throughout 102 degrees in Boise. 
96 degrees expected in Idaho Falls as well. Over in Salt Lake, 101 degrees is expected. Just high temperatures across the entire western United States as well. Future cast showing us why there is low pressure up in Canada as well, down in, uh, in south of us as well, which is creating that ridge of high pressure that is allowing for those high temperatures to be there as well. So just a lot of a lot of things bringing in those high temperatures that we have been seeing over the past couple days. The high temperatures for today, 103 degrees expected in Emmett, 102 degrees expected in Boise and Caldwell as well, and over in Ontario expected to be 104 degrees today. So high, high temperatures in the Treasure Valley. What to expect for the next few days? Very high temperatures, as I said, lots of sun and heat. 100 degree temperatures expected through Sunday and mid 90s expected early next week. And that is shown on our temperature trends. 103 degrees today that'll drop down to 100 on Friday but Saturday it'll jump back up to 102 degrees and the last day of 100 degrees will be on Sunday where it's expected to be around 100 to 101 degrees it'll drop down to 96 degrees on Monday but still high temperatures expected throughout the Treasure Valley oh all right We've done it for a couple days, Vasily. We can get through a couple more. It is Thursday, 639. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Looking very sunny out there. Let's send it over to News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, sun glare to deal with on the drive as you get ready to get out the door. Depending on the angle of your drive, it can be uh, pretty bad some spots. Careful with that as always. A little bit of merge slowing. It's pretty minimal, though. Now and then, there's some brake lights. 10-mile Meridian Road. Not a big jam up by any means. And other routes away from the freeways. Starting to see a little more morning volume kick in. But, again, nothing big going. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And now it's time for our favorite part of the day. It's our question of the day. Nearly 20% of people have never done this summer activity. Okay, Vasily, what are we thinking? Well, I was thinking maybe if you're not into the outdoors or you don't like the heat very much, maybe it's hiking, maybe it's getting out there in the outdoors, something like that, or it might have to do with the water too. I don't know. What do you think, Sarah? Yeah, there's a lot of summer activities on my bucket list. Um, I know that parasailing may be one of them. 20% though, so a low amount have never done this. It, it has to be floating the river. That's all I can think of. Maybe that's because that's all on my mind mm -hmm. with, you know, this hot temperatures. Linda says going swimming. Yeah, no, 20% have not. It makes me so sad for them, Vasily. So Ooh. sad. They will never know the joys. All right, what else are we thinking, guys? Douglas says mowed the lawn. Didn't even oh, think about chores. Yeah, not apparently not thinking about chores. Haven't named <laughs> one yet this morning. But yeah, mowing your lawn. Definitely a summertime activity. Thomas, <laughs> a hot dog eating <laughs> contest. Yep, you got to be careful with those hot dog eating contests too, but definitely believe it. Is, is that's yeah, that's a summertime activity, that's a summertime you know. Summertime activity. They do the, the hot dog eating contest during the 4th. It's, it's a summertime oh, activity. Oh gosh, yeah, the men in my family a hot dog eating contest is anytime we get together to barbecue. All right. <laughs> so, if you think you know the answer, we still have 15 more minutes. You can guess on our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll read the guess right before CBS this morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, more people coming out with reaction after a video of the shooting in Uvalde, Texas was leaked. Why one of the state senators is calling the police response indefensible. Well, folks, here's a look at our CBS2 Adventure Weather local forecasts over in Idaho City. Very hot today, 97 degrees expected as the high. Tonight that'll drop down to 50 and we'll expect clear skies, but tomorrow the heat will not dissipate. It'll be 95 degrees as the high tomorrow. And over in the western part of the valley in Payette, 102 degrees expected tomorrow. Very, very hot temperatures. That'll drop down to 71 that night, but tomorrow the heat will not stop either it'll be 100 degrees as well and pay it tomorrow yeah full speed ahead with those triple digits thank you Vasily. it is 6 45 on your thursday the leaked video of the school shooting in uvalde texas drawing in reaction from across the country this morning now texas senator ted cruz also sharing his thoughts on that video he says the way police responded to the uvalde shooting is quote indefensible calling the video horrifying Cruz went on to say that, quote, it's clear law enforcement should have gone in and stopped the shooter much earlier. 
I think there needs to be transparency. There needs to be accountability. And there is simply no good explanation for law enforcement waiting 77 interminable minutes. Now, it's not clear what consequences, if any, officers may face from the delayed confrontation. The Texas House Investigative Committee is set to release its preliminary report any day now. Well, on Wednesday night, the House passed legislation establishing an Amber Alert like system for active shooter events nationwide. The legislation, it passed 260 to 169. Now, last month, the Active Shooter Alert Act was shot down by the House in a 259 to 162 vote with two thirds needed for passage. Now, this time it only needed a simple majority. The bill now heads to the Senate floor. And turning to developing news this morning, WNBA star Brittany Griner's trial in Russia. It's set to continue today. The New York Times reports that Griner is scheduled to appear in Russian court again today. It comes after Griner pleaded guilty to drug charges last week. Now Griner was arrested in the Moscow airport back in February after authorities say they found vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her bag. Now her lawyers say she mistakenly packed those cartridges while in a rush. Well, this morning, President Biden is continuing his Middle Eastern trip with a second day in Israel. The president slated to receive the Israeli Medal of Honor and attend the opening ceremonies of the Maccabi Games. That's a global competition of international Jewish athletes. Now, on Friday, he then meets with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas before traveling to Saudi Arabia for the final leg of his trip. All right, I know we keep talking about how hot it's going to be out here. I know those at home trying to find any way to be able to cool down. And I know that at least if you don't have good air conditioning, you want to find ways to be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the main rule, if you are out in the hot sun, is about seven to eight ounces every half hour. That's just minimum, though. So you want to keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely yeah. drink a lot of fluids. Keep yourself hydrated. Stay safe in these hot temperatures. And also cool off in the river as well. Like, yeah. find time to get in the water and cool off a little bit. One of my favorite things, too, is as you go down, I mean, if you're walking into the parks, Julia, Davis, Ann Morrison, you can see everyone kind of congregating down by the river. It's the oh, place yeah. to be mm -hmm. when temperatures are this high. Yeah, if I guess you don't have a pool near you or in your home or you don't, you know, steal a pool like I guess I kind of have <laughs> done all the time that I've lived in Boise, calling myself out a little bit. But mm -hmm. at least temperatures today, how hot is it going to get? Well, it's going to get very hot today. Temperatures are definitely going to range there or above 100 degrees. Okay, hottest day of the week, right? Today is mm -hmm. expected to hottest be that? Hottest day of the week expected okay, today. Guys, we can do this. Again, it is Thursday. We have one more day until we finally hit the weekend, but we want to stay cool. Let's take mm -hmm. a look at temperatures right now, at least, because pretty mild out there. Sorry. Yep, temperatures right now, we're looking at the lows pretty much across the Treasure Valley. In Boise right now, it is 67 degrees. Over in Ontario, it's 73, so heating up a little bit, but we are still in that high 60 to low 70 range right now. So for the next few days, we are going to expect very high temperatures. Lots of sun and heat. Temperatures are going to be in the 100 degree range through Sunday. It'll drop to the mid 90s early next week, but not very much relief expected. High temperatures today, 102 degrees expected in Boise, 103 in Emmett, and 103 in Mountain Home as well. Over in Ontario, 104 degrees expected, and up in the mountains in McCall, 90 degrees expected as well. Radar showing us little to no cloud cover, which is resulting in little to no precipitation as well. The extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, we are expecting 100 degree temperatures through Sunday, leading into Monday where it'll drop to 95 degrees, which is around the normal high, but it'll jump back up to 98 degrees on Wednesday. And over in the mountains, we're expecting expecting that similar trend where it'll be very hot during the weekend, but once it hits Monday, it'll drop back to around the average and then jump up again on Tuesday and Wednesday up to 88 degrees on Wednesday. All right, thank you, Vasily. It is 6.50 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get our last check of what's happening out on the roads from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there this morning? Hey there, Sarah. It's uh, not too bad. It's been uh, pretty standard so far this morning. Don't have any uh, major issues to report, uh, but uh, morning traffic starting to kick in a little bit. Hasn't been terribly bad even on I-84 at the merge areas. Usually 7 o'clock hours when things really uh, tend to thicken up. Careful through various uh, construction zones, of course, as always, including that area of Highway 44 between Highway 16 and Linder. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan.
Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. You can find it at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, if you lost anything this ski season, a teen in Colorado may want to speak with you. How he's working to return some re-emerging items. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 6.53 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Winter sports have long been over. And now that the snow is melted, lots of things starting to reappear on the mountainside. That includes some items people lost while skiing the previous winter. Well, Marshall Zeller shares the story of a teen who's out looking for those lost items in hope of returning them to their rightful owner. You can search for Miles looking for a lost item on a mountain. All the colorful cards are credit cards. Or you could let Miles search for you. During the summer, I go underneath the chairlifts and uh, go looking for lost items. 16-year-old Miles Vale finds what gets unveiled once the snow melts at Keystone. I find phones, AirPods, ski passes, all sorts of random things. I remember the feeling that something had left my pockets. Andrew Knoll in Boca Raton, Florida, lost his iPhone during an annual ski trip to Colorado this past winter. My cell phone was like our our lifeline of making it back to the right spot at the right time. He and his buddy found their way home, even without the phone he lost at Keystone. The phone recovered months later by Vail, Miles Vail. I found someone's phone. It had a picture of a dog on it and the caller actually had the person's phone number on it. So he asked me what my background was. And honestly, I didn't recall if it was a picture of me and my significant other or it was a picture of Alan, which was the dog. So I was able to take the phone number off the collar and contact him via the number on the collar, which I think is pretty cool. When I realized that that's what he did, I knew like this was a special type of person. Andrew's phone is one of 11 miles found. I have two left but waiting for those people to respond to me. Like the person whose phone powers up to a lost iPhone screen with a phone number. All Miles asks for in return is the cost of shipping. It was like pure altruism, like the act of going the extra mile without the expectation of getting anything in return. And I know that, that that's a different type of person. But if you're going to reward him, I mean reward him. I've had people pay me like three bucks for their phone. It's like, I found your really expensive phone and that's all you're going to give me. And it's like, well, at least they gave me something. Andrew sent Miles a gift card. Turns out Andrew had phone insurance, paid 200 for a new one, and traded his found phone for 400 He actually basically gave me $200. His hard work awarded me $200. So I split that in half with him, which is still selfish of me. I should have gave him the whole damn 200 bucks. <laughs> like I said, Miles doesn't ask for anything but shipping. I just do it because it's fun to clean up the community and help return people's last items. Oh, all those AirPods. All right. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question, nearly 20% of people have never done this activity. All right. What is it, Vasily? Well, the answer is bought ice cream from an ice cream truck. Wow. I figured people had already had had ice cream from an ice cream truck. Before. Yeah, no, that is surprising. Okay, well, if you hear the jingle, you got to run outside and go do it, guys. Once in a lifetime kind of things. Stay cool out there. Our next newscast is at 11 a.m. We'll see you then. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. 